feel like you found a fit with this defense? I think we found each other. <laughs> you know, um, it's been, it's been, um, I love it here. I mean, honestly, like I couldn't explain how the transition been just to give you the actual reply of just, I love it here. You know, um, since uh, March 13th, getting off the phone with Coach Flus and Poles and everybody since the moment here, you know, uh, it's been uh, just, um, just been a dream come true, you know, and then obviously um, with other teams that I was on, you know, I had to, you know, find my identity to where, you know, you know, it's up to me to, you know, define my identity here. So, I mean, it's been, it's been great, obviously. Speaking on the, the identity, Eddie Jackson said yesterday that you've come in right away and you're not afraid to hold guys accountable, calling them out for things like that. What type of things are you looking for and how do you go about, like, addressing them? If not, like, going off on guys, but just addressing them. I'm not one that to get to the public. <laughs> um, <sighs> honestly, you know, to piggyback off what the first reporter asked me, I mean, when I first joined the team, I'm quiet. You know, slowly uh, assimilate to the team, but to where obviously, you know, I, I mean, I have a, you know, they're asking me to make a difference here. So, I mean, uh, I'm a spirit, I'm, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, and you know, God was telling me that to where go into the situation opposite, to where I come, you know, being myself and come lay down the law of things I see and what I learned along this journey. And um, I mean, you, you only get one year. People just think that to where if you had a three-year deal, four-year deal, I got four years. No, you got now. You take care of this year, they'll take care of the next year. And that's where uh, we're trying to get the maturity to all the players to get to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, well, we got the number one pick last year, so what is there to be happy about? What is there to celebrate about? Like, anything that we're doing, we're trying to, like, learn, lay down a new foundation to get to the promised land. And um, so, I mean, this is just from, I mean, learning from Super Bowl champions at the Broncos, learning from guys who won when Houston went on a run and, lost to the Chiefs in that big run. And, you know, the Titans was um, – they had a, the uh, first seed two years ago. So, I mean, all that maturity and uh, wisdom definitely helped me get these guys to challenge them every single day. What, is, what, are, what are those things you learned? What, what are the things you're trying to impart on guys? I mean, uh, a key to lead, all right? He'll call you out. You know what I'm saying? That was somebody who I learned that call you out. Um, to where, um, I mean, just the off the field things that, um, showing, uh, like that Von Miller was, uh, pushing guys to do that, you know, cohesiveness, that chemistry. And then to where obviously when you're on the field, it's, it's competition. You're challenging one another. And, um, I learned that, uh, from the Titans. I mean, uh, definitely getting those guys, um, you know, uh, a little roughness inside me, definitely get these guys to. You know, you got to work, man. You got to work. You got to go out there and challenge yourself and challenge the guy in front of you. That's where it's not going to be an easy day. When you bring these things up, what has the response been? How have you seen guys react? I'm still here, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, um, it's, it's been great. I mean, um, Chicago as a whole has been reassuring me that to where I'm doing something correct. And um, that is big because, you know, me coming in, you know, I don't, I didn't want to, you know, overstep, you know, Eddie Jackson – I didn't want to overstep a lot of guys that have been there a lot longer, you know what I'm saying? Because they really know a lot of tradition, you know, Cody Whitehair and everything. So I wanted just to like, all right, well, let me just see. But then to where it's just like, nah, like keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's been definitely a blessing. You think what, do you, the, what do you think this pass rush can look like with the guys you've got out there? I mean, the defense struggled getting after the quarterback here. I know, right? Um, and that's why I'm here. You know, so, uh, I mean, it's development. Because, I mean, everyone who scouted me and come into the league said I wasn't – they didn't think I'd be at the be as long as I've been into this league so far. And it, it can just show you that to where if you have the ability to learn, you know, you have to have the passion to want to as well. Um, it can be surreal. So um, getting those guys, uh, you know, going at first, knowing, that, hey, we're about to work. Zach Pickens, you know, Jervon and – did all those guys get them going, and then to where the things that I know what helps me get become successful in the league from stance, get off, you know, football one on one, knowing knowing that to where, you know, there's a lot of different resources that can help you make plays a lot quicker. So having the knowledge and the wisdom I have and sharing it to the whole D line from today, from May first when I got here, I mean that's all I've been just whatever I know, I owe, you know. What do you look for at this time of year? Uh, are there any indicators to give you a sense of whether the team's going to be any good? 
I mean, I, I haven't been to the playoffs yet, man. So I'm still learning. You know what I'm saying? But you've been in, in, in a couple of different places where uh, in, you've been in different environments. And mm-hmm. I'm, I was just curious if there's kind of themes that you can see in June that are that are helpful or not helpful. I mean, the only thing I can tell you is just from the people um, upstairs told me that to where there's a lot more competitiveness and excitement this year than it was, you know, prior. And uh, I'm not knocking or, you know, saying anything to the previous teams, you know what I'm saying? So I just know that right now that we're either competing, you know what I'm saying? You know, if y'all hear somebody yelling, it's time to work, mother, that's me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, every day when I step on those lines, I make sure the team hear that, you know? What's notable about Matt Eberflus' style, especially as a head coach who's not, you know, well, also has his own defensive coordinator? I mean, Flus has his moments where, you know, he, he get on you, and then he has his moments where he let us be pros. And I think that is definitely um, a shout-out to him, you know, for having that, you know, that uh, you know that sense of balance to where that – to where I mean, at the end of the day, we're still kids, but then I can't forget that we're pros as well. Letting the players lead the players. And, um, I mean, when we had our uh, leadership meeting with him, I mean, uh, that conversation with him and the leaders, it went well. I think we all, like, agreed on the same page. And since then, you know, we've been holding our end of the bargain of, you know, holding guys accountable and he coaching the coaches. What, what did you like about his role in that? His role. I don't know. I, I'm still I'm still uh, defining that, you know, because we have a lot more time to spend together as a group. And then uh, just, just right now, um, I think, you know, he's just, you know, like his co- like his his quote, let me coach the coaches, y'all coach the players. I mean that was perfect words for him to come out of his mouth, so I love that. So you were part of the you were part of the leadership meeting. Was this like a recent thing? Oh uh, yeah, it was going in before uh, phase three. Was, I mean to be, I know you've been in the league now for six years, right? Seven. So one of year seven. So I mean, but to come here to be part of a first year, like your first year on this team, like what does that say to you just about like how much your leadership stood out? Where they're like, yeah, we're gonna tap him as one of the leaders of this team already before we've been playing a live down of football. Great question. Um, I've been me. Like you know, I've been you know, um, I, I've been had that leadership quality inside me, even when I had to take the back seat for six years. You know what I'm saying? And um, even when um, I was taking the back seat, the guys in the, in the front look at me at a point in time to, you know, give some type of uh, energy, you know, um, towards the guys. So, I mean, uh, I just keep it, you know, keep it, uh, keep it humble. And then um, instead of learning to, because, you know, when becoming a leader, you can get yourself too high, you know. Um, so I try to look in the mirror and see nothing, you know. I heard this old quote, when a giant, when a giant looks in the mirror, he sees nothing. So I have to keep that humbleness, you know what I'm saying? When you're line up, when you're line up, it seems like you have at least a surface level awareness of the results here last year in terms of the losses and the production defensively. How does that resonate with you as a new guy, and what do you do to go about kind of changing it? Nah, we, we, I forgot about that crap. I mean, honestly, you know, the first few weeks, you know, you see, you know, what has, you know, what we're working with, what's, what, what's the cause of that. But, man, you know, this is 2023 Chicago Bears. We got a whole new, di- we got a whole new identity, whole new defense whole new offense, whole new group of guys that's going out there willing to fight and lead. So, I mean, honestly, you know what I'm saying? Straight up, like, like last year's done. When you're, lining, when you're lining up inside versus outside, I'm just curious, like, other than the obvious, what's the biggest difference for you? Is it like a different mentality? Do um, you prefer one or to the other? Put me anywhere, all right? Put me anywhere. I just want to play I don't that mentality. Just put me in. Great question. 2021 Houston Texans. When I had to play in, I had to play three. An Arizona game, they had to be playing those full time. You know, so after that year, I mean, I call it the, the Swiss Army knife year. I didn't have the production I wanted, but God showed me how to be very versatile and do it well. You know, that's one thing that people like uh, don't understand. If you want to do it, you want to do it right and do it well. So knowing, um, knowing that and, and 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 having that underneath my belt. I don't care. I just want to go out there and help the team win and go out there and affect the quarterback. I run saw you out there uh, making a couple of catches from Justin Fields. What's it like working with Justin Fields? Yeah. Um, he's an impressive young player. Um, obviously, like, a great athlete, but he is very competitive and uh, self-reflective, and he knows when, uh, you know, he could be better or whatnot. So when you have a competitive person who's internally motivated, like, and a leader, 
like he is and he's continuing to grow, like I'm very impressed with him and he's only going to continue to grow and get better. Robert, what have the coaches told you about your role with the Bears? How does that compare to what it was like with Green Bay? Uh, I mean, it's a little different because I'm a little uh, – technically I'm older here. Um, but just just bring this the knowledge of the offense to here. Um, just dominate when I'm on the field, whatever it may be. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. You know, it's just OTAs. I think a lot more stuff will settle in once training camp comes because you got to see the new guys, you got to see the young guys. P you know, they're still learning the system. But, um, yeah, I'm just excited to just continue to earn these guys' trust and, and lead and just and take off from there. Is it the same type of offense that Luke was a part of in Green Bay? Yeah. The same thing? To an extent, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more different words, and uh, you know, Luke gets you know a little crazy with the creativity, and that's why we love him. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for that, and just honing in on the little details and little changes uh, that may be. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. What's been the biggest difference of being part of an offense where I know in Green Bay, Aaron wasn't always there during OTAs, and you had a more veteran established unit. But here, when you mentioned the offense, players still trying to yeah. get it off the ground. How different is that for you in having experienced both? Yeah, I think for difference for me is like that I have to kind of just be the one who is on top of the details. Um, not that I wasn't before, but just show those young guys like how it's operated and how it's ran. Um, but yeah. I mean, like I said, OTAs are just kind of, you know, figuring out, you know, learning how to be in a huddle with different people, learning how to play with different people. Obviously, like with the, for me, a different quarterback, completely different team. Um, but just kind of building those relationships on and off the field and, um, yeah, just continuing to go from there. Has it been as much fun to be a part of this team in your hometown in this area? Has it oh, it's a blast. I'm having so much fun. Um, I can see, like, my parents, like, every night or every other night they just pop over at the house help me move in and stuff like that get the house ready but I'm just so blessed and so grateful that um you know polls for allowing me to come back here and just you know help this team and uh yeah just it's gonna take off from here I'm just I'm real I'm truly really excited and really happy to be here do you finally feel like you're on the right side of the rivalry <laughs> Yeah, I think you can say that for sure. Well, did you happen to hear the comments made yesterday by Justin Jones? Seems oh, I did. I yeah, I just heard about him. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. What did you think? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think any NFL team, I think people have their opinions on uh, some fans and stuff like that, and especially in a rivalry like this. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, JJ is a, a little opinionated on that, and I like that. I like that fire in him. But, yeah, I mean – I think you can say about just about anything about any fan base, but like I said, like this rivalry is huge. It's one of the strongest in the NFL, so um, there's obviously going to be that that banter for sure. Obviously, when you were there, they were on your side, but did you notice that in the stands that like fans would get rowdy, maybe especially so when the Bears were in town? Um, I, I mean, I, honestly, whenever stadium I went to, I feel like that was the that was the case. You know, fans are wild, especially when they've uh, had a couple of drinks in them, that's for sure. <laughs> Robert, for, for a team that struggled last season, obviously three wins, uh, trying to set a new foundation this offseason. What have you sensed of this group, both the, the guys who are coming back and the newcomers in terms yeah. of? Well, the young guys that have been here, like, they're hungry. They, they want to win. Like, that wasn't, like, they know that that's not a standard. Like, that's not, you know, what you come into the NFL for. You don't just come and just coast and, you know, get three wins. That's how people get fired. That's how players get out of jobs. Um but obviously the new guys coming in, they're, we're here for a reason. You know, defensively and offensively, the older guys that were brought in, uh, they're here for a reason. And uh, I think that with that change and with those guys being brought in, the young guys feel that, the guys who've been here feel that and, uh, you know, want to get on that page and they want to win. Um, you know, winning's awesome. Going to the playoffs is different. You know, winning the division is a great feeling. And uh, just hopefully that I want to bring that feeling here offensively and just – you know, defense is going to take care of themselves. We, they got good leaders. They went out and got the right people. Um, and offensively, we did too. And I think we're just trending in the right direction. How do you look at this division now with 12s out of Green Bay? And it seems like it's kind of wide open. It's wide open. And that's the best part, you know. You know there's Everyone's young. Everyone's new. You know, you got good players on every team. And that's the thing. Like, there's no favorite. 
and it's wide open, and that's exactly where you want to be. From, from, from a question here, I, having been a part of this offense when it's clicked at, at the highest level, what are the things that you like about the system and the things that make it hum? Um, it's very versatile. Like Personnel-wise, you can put anyone in there and run the same exact plays, um, different looks to the same formations or a bunch of motions or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that, I think that's like a good offense is a, is a lot of uh, smoke in the mirror to get what you want accomplished. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to kind of be a part of, you know, the creativity that Luke has brought. When you, t- when you talk about him being crazy with the creativity, give us an example without obviously giving away. Yeah, no, he's just smart. He's, he's, he's a, you know, he, he's awesome. Like, he's just, he's really in there grinding to, like, win games and make us better. Genu- genuinely loves, like, the men in this locker room. So, um, and as well as all the coaches, like they're trying to get to know you, um, and they care about you. And I think that's the biggest thing is building trust before you can just go in there and just start, you know, coaching and telling people what to do. Well, right, now that you've just been one... here for a little bit, is there anything that's made an impression upon you from Luke's growth as a position coach, yeah. as a game coordinator to now offensive coordinator? Yeah, I mean, it, it. You know, I saw him as like a receiver and quarterback coach. So now, like him running the meetings and him out there, you know getting after people and on the, you know, on the microphone, the QB microphone, it's just cool to kind of see like his growth as well as like, you know, he saw me come from, you know, a practice squad receiver, quarterback receiver turned tight end. So it's just cool to, you know, see each other's growth. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to be a part of it and just kind of, you know, be the bridge from, you know, him to the guys and like how to, how this offense is, you know, ran and uh, you know, what he's trying to get accomplished. How How are you going about trying to build chemistry with Justin? I mean, just being, like, honestly, just a, a genuine person. I, I mean, I just – I like talking to people. I like, you know, getting to know people. You know, if you just have a locker room where just people go in there, you're sitting on your phone and you're just chilling, you know, you'd be surprised at, you know, how many people nowadays are just head down and on their phone. But, you know, just team bonding activities. That's what OTAs really are here for. Like, you know, you're going to learn offense and you're going to, you know, figure stuff out and you're going to compete. But, like, what OTAs really are is – to have that downtime and close time with those players that um, you don't get during the season because, you know, season's long and grueling. Once you leave this building, you're not trying to do anything else other than, like, go rest, recover, and, you know, you have a schedule. Um, So just kind of building those relationships, and that's what kind of Coach Fluce has has been big on is just, just trying to get people to know each other, trust each other, love each other, and then you'll go that extra mile. For your brother, Robert, with just one, with just one practice left tomorrow, where's the passing game at in your mind, and what do you guys still have to work on to get to that top level? Yeah, um, I mean, from what I saw last year, obviously there wasn't very much passing game, um, but I was very impressed with Justin and obviously the O line that has made you know a jump. Obviously, going getting Darnell and you know going to get Nate and just kind of like where people are at, the understanding of the offense. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm just impressed with the you know the growth that's going on and I think that we're turning in the right direction and yeah I'm excited to just get back for training camp and actually really compete and uh yeah get a crack in. Robert, I'm just curious you've been in the division for a while what do you think the Bears place in it going into the season and it's obviously obviously going to be real different without the Packers quarterback. Yeah I think yeah like like we said before just wide open and um I love I love where we're at you know overlooked underrated whatever you want to call it but I mean they still got to step on the field with us. They got to see us. So, yeah, I'm excited. What's the difference between the right side and the left side? Uh, footwork, footwork mostly. Um, just like just using your hands and where they aim and where they hit. Uh, big thing for me right now is my pass for us thing. I'm trying to get better at it. And this uh, big break and this coming up right here, this is like that's exactly what I'm gonna be working on the whole time. Tell them. Go. And I remember asking you last year, maybe around week six or seven, if you had kind of settled into the idea of being a guard or if you still felt like a tackle. And you honestly was like, no, I still feel like a tackle. I'm just doing what I'm asked to do. Do you feel more like a guard this year or you still feel tackle? Uh, I still feel like a guard now. Like uh, maybe now I could do like the emergency uh, tackle if it has it ever comes down to it. But uh, right now I'd say I lay myself as guard as it is right now because I've been, I've been moving these past two years as right guard, left guard. So. What's, I'd like myself as. 
with how many moves you with how many moves you had last year, I mean, this time of year, you're going from left tackle to, you know, then figuring out right guard. How does it feel just being at one position where you're getting all the reps at left guard with the ones? Uh, it lets me actually get good at my craft. And it feels good because I can actually work on one thing instead of trying to flip-flop sides and make sure I got equal work on both sides instead of having, like, 60 snaps on my left, 40 snaps on my right, and trying to do the imbalances. <clears throat> What was the turning point for you in terms of being convinced that uh, my path forward here now is as a guard and I need to just be fully into that? Uh, my job title. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, 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 last year too, though. But I mean, I mean, this stuff like it's like in in your heart, you know. You want to fight for. That's why I used to be. You know, that's like you like you live in the past, but like I need to look forward. And right now, it's for me. It's going to be a guard. So I'm, that's my title right now. Are you happy? Are you happier now? Like, do you feel more settled in that, and it's not kind of being pulled between two things? Is it easier to just move forward with one? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, with, with, with some of the things you've been through the first two seasons with injuries and availability, what types of things did you zero in on this off season to try to make sure that you would be available for for a big stretch? Uh, just basically lengthening and strengthening muscles, and uh, working on all the small muscles that you never think about. Uh, like it's like those like small interior muscles around my neck to build that up so nothing happens again so I don't get no stingers I don't have another lapse or whatever happened uh, when we play the Eagles I don't have another anything happen in my back again you know I'm doing those muscles around the spine that make it a lot stronger so those things don't flare up Are you working with people here or doing some independently as well uh, independently and here as well I mean that's really, the strength coach here is really good so we are do that that's with someone also yeah. who is that uh, right now, I'm just doing it with Pilates. That's mostly. Gotcha. And then that's for my spine and my strength core over there. And my neck stuff, all that, I do here in the facility. Super reformer or regular reformer? Yeah, super. Do you, which, one, which machine do you use? I use a reformer. I didn't know they had a super reformer. <laughs> it's got all the straps and everything on the bars. It's really, my Cadillac? Mm -hmm. it's really good for your core. It's a big workout. Wow. You do the plank on it? Yeah, it's hard. Mm. <laughs> Lewis had mentioned yesterday that you know hopefully it won't be. He called it moving chairs. You know we hear that a lot with offensive line with the musical chairs that sometimes happens in training camp. To feel like this group is kind of set, where the same guys are getting the one reps every practice that you guys are out here. What does that do going into training camp, knowing that you've kind of built that continuity earlier than most times we've seen it? Well, it's a definitely like a thing that you know who you're playing next to, and you could build up that chemistry. Like, uh, I've been hanging out with Cody and Lucas, uh, Braxton, Nate, Darnell. You know, we hang out all the time. Like, we go out, uh, this is past week, we all went out to a restaurant. We hang out, and we was there for a couple hours hanging out, just talking about stuff. So just knowing that, going into camp, that I know who I'm going to play next to is pretty good. You've been playing with Justin for a while. There's all kinds of talk about how he's progressing as he goes on in his career. What have you seen since the end of last season now where Justin's really impressed you with? Uh, I'll say his maturity. He, uh, he carries himself, I would say, probably like a 10-year vet right now. And just seeing how he commands that huddle and what he uh, wants to see out of all of us, it's it's like a wake up call for me like, to see that I need to start pushing myself to get on his level because he's demanding that sort of uh, effort out of, out, of, out of all of us. Tevin, when, when a team wins three games, it's usually a long road back to contention. We've talked to some new faces here today, but I'm curious. You've been here. Do you feel change? I mean, do you feel uh, anything in the building or just in general on the field, or is it going to take games to really prove that to to really uh, demonstrate that? you know, that uh, this team has turned a corner? Well, right now, as we see the, the new additions, like you said, like we're watching film together, all T OTAs, you know, we're seeing people make plays. And the new people, the new additions, like, it's really good to see. Like, I believe that the new additions were for the best and for better right now. And they're going, like, they're here to make plays, and they have been making plays. So it's been good. When they start uh, with all the injuries you've had to deal with in the last couple of years, how did you deal with that mentally? Did you learn anything about yourself in, in that regard? Uh, yeah, I learned that I need to not uh, forget about the small muscles that I was talking about earlier. 
Like those small muscles are the one that get you, and they, they they're the one that can protect you from further injury. It's the muscles that you really neglect that you never think about. I mean, like getting through it mentally or emotionally. Oh, uh, my wife. Yeah, honestly, I know I bring, talk about her all the time, but uh, mentally, yeah, she's 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 the one that's been helping me out a lot, and. I just go to her when I'm having any type of troubles, and she reassures me anytime I have any problem. When, when they signed Nate, did, did you get a call telling them, like, hey, you're going to be going, did, you're going to move over to left guard, or did, did they, just, you learn about it later then? Well, they signed Nate at whatever time in the morning, and five minutes later, that's when SEMO uh, called me and said I was getting moved to left guard and start practicing over there see if, and make sure I was all comfortable to go and ready to go when we come back to Durham right now. He's always communicated, like he gave you heads up last year when you're going to move back. Yeah, yeah. There's always it's like enough time for me to really adjust before uh, anything really happens. Like, it, there's enough time. Kevin, when, when you talk about Justin's maturity and, and sort of that command, what, what, how would you describe the value of that for you guys as an entire offense? Uh, I really don't know how to answer that one, but I can just tell you that it's very – necessary to have that type of leadership especially when it comes to your quarterback because when he takes command like it's set in tone for the whole offense like it's all starts with him he gets a play call uh we have to do our thing but you know when he's on top of his stuff you know he demands a lot of things like out of us so that Kevin, without Let's more guys without pads what's been your early impressions of the young d tackles javon and zach when you go up against them uh, very good hand usage out of the, both of them right now. Uh, those two really know how to set up inside and outside moves. I'm very, I'm seeing it right now. Uh, I've been impressed with how they've been uh, rushing so far, and and we're not even doing power attacks right now. So just seeing their speed game right now, out of like how big, even though how big they are, is just surprising. And when I see, when I do in training camp, when we put the pads on. They're, they're going to be much of a harder rushers when they, they get you and start bull rushing. Tevin, when you got that advance notice from SEMO about moving to left, was there anything you could do on your own to prepare for that swat side switch? Like, did that extra advance notice help you in any way? Uh, yeah, it did because we had, like, three weeks before we came back and, like, met as an actual team. Like, we do there like, two minutes, two hours of meetings, whatever, uh, phase one, wherever it was. Uh, but – it gave me time to actually work on my footwork and my mentality. I got back in my playbook. I had to flip certain plays going this way. Now I have to flip it this way, and it's a whole mindset had to change. So it was, it was very good to have that time in between.